Kia ora koutou. Welcome everyone to our webinar for uh, Gateway to New Brighton, Pages Road Bridge and surrounding streets. I'm Kristen Lantnison, an engagement advisor here at Council and your host for this webinar. Thank you for joining us online. Um, a bit of an agenda. You'll see on screen now what we'll be covering today. Um, but before we get into the content, I'll first introduce you to the team behind the screen um, and let you know how you can participate during the session. I'll then hand over to the team to give you an overview of the Gateway to New Brighton project. So today you'll be hearing from Nathan, who is our project manager, uh, Peter, who is our design manager, and from Emma, who is the landscape architect. We also have Kieran and Aviva working hard behind the scenes to keep the session ru running smoothly. Um, your mics and cameras are switched off so that we can keep the session moving, but you can ask questions using the Microsoft Teams chat function. Uh, this is located at the top bar menu as a speech bubble. Uh, if you're not able to use this function, you can still ask questions. Please email them through to let's talk at ccc.govt.nz. We'll answer questions at the end of the webinar, but do feel free to ask them throughout. If you're hard of hearing or you're experiencing sound issues, um, you can turn on live captions. Just click the three small dots at the top of your screen um, above the more section and click turn on live captions near the bottom of the drop down list. One last thing from me, hopefully the banner came up to let you know that this session is being recorded. This recording will be shared on our YouTube channel over the next few days um, and you'll receive an email showing you how you can access this. I'll now hand over to Nathan, uh, who will start the presentation. Thank you, Crystal, for the introduction to this webinar. As the project manager of this project, I'd like to say thank you for tuning in today and taking the time out of your busy lives and the interest in this project. We're really excited to share this project and scheme design with you. A good place to start off is the bridge background. Essentially, this is the center point of the project and why we are doing this work. So the top left hand picture, so you'll see a little mouse run along with my um, face on it, um, and th that'll be the pointer for the design and um, as we go through the slides. So essentially, um, the red pin is where the bridge is. Now that's across the Avon River into New Brighton. To the right of that picture, you can see the New Brighton Pier and the beach and the sea. So that's where the bridge is. To the left of the picture is towards the city. Now the picture on the right is the existing bridge over the Avon River. This is, and this is what I'm just about to talk about. So a bit about the bridge, the background of it. The, this is the bridge into New Brighton. This is the bridge that as you go into New Brighton, there's a palm tree in the middle of the roundabout. This bridge was opened in 1931, so that's 90 years ago. It is the lifeline bridge and a key evacuation route for New Brighton. Now, what I mean by lifeline bridge is it allows people to evacuate in terms of emergency, and also it carries services that are essential to provide New Brighton. That includes wastewater, water supply, power and comms, and these utilities, these services are large too. So the bridge, the bridge was damaged in the 2011 earthquakes. As part of the Skirt Alliance, they undertook emergency short-term repairs, and those repairs last 10 years. Now, those 10 years has started in 2015 when the repairs were done, and in 2025, the, um, it is deemed that they, you know, they've that had their life. Now, in 2025, the bridge, the repairs don't just run out in the bridge needs replacing exactly then, but it's like a house House has a design life of 50 years. So essentially the bridge is at the end of its residual life. Um, next slide, please, Karen. So the project objectives. So I'd like to talk to the pictures on the right-hand side first. So the pictures on the right-hand side shows the 
a bit of the bridge damage where the abutments had settled as we experienced um, the actual spreading. The bottom photo is an aerial of the bridge in the existing roundabout. And so you can see the bridge across the Avon River there with a five leg roundabout to the immediately to the right of it. And this is an important picture in that roundabout because I'll talk to that while I go through the project objectives. So the project objectives, this is why we need the project and what the project will achieve. So the resilient bridge replacement. That's, I mean, it's easier said than done. We just need a new bridge. So we'll build a new bridge. So there'll be one immediately north of it. We want to restore the level of service for the vehicle access to pre-earthquake. So currently the bridge has a limit on speed for heavy vehicles. This is to prevent further damage from the earthquake damage. So it's prevent the heavy vehicles producing further damage. So essentially a new bridge will fix that problem. We want to improve the pedestrian connectivity and cycling access. So for people that have experienced this as a pedestrian or cycling cyclist, this roundabout, on, um, the existing roundabout is is really not good. Um, it's substandard, but something needs to happen here. Also with this roundabout, we need to address the vertical and horizontal road deficiencies. For people that are driven through there, you would notice the sight lines are terrible. We've got a bridge that you can't really see past that goes straight into uh, uh, the roundabout with with bad sight lines through through that intersection. So we need to do something with this roundabout, which we which we have in our proposed design. And something that I've held dear to and I've held the project to is that we want to improve the emergency evacuation emergency evacuation efficiency and capacity across the bridge and the intersection. So this is what our scheme designers set out to do and we have done it. So now I'll pass you on to Pete, who will talk to you about the scheme design. Oh, thanks for that, Nathan. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Yep, I'll talk you through the proposed scheme design now and the changes and upgrades that are proposed. Um, so the screen you will see in front of you that has an image of the overall uh, plan of the area um, at a kind of large scale, um, uh, really just to get your bearings. So you'll see here we've got Pages Road along here leading up to the new bridge, um, New Brighton Mall and uh, the pier that's off to the right hand side with you'll see the River Avon running through the middle of the screen. Um, so I'll zoom in on each of these three rectangular areas um, to talk about the design in a bit more detail. Uh, the first is the red rectangle, which will focus on the core of the project, the bridge and the approaching pages road. Um, we'll then move to talk about Sevier Road and Hardy Street, and then we'll talk about uh, the changes proposed over at Rawson and Pratt Street. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this is the core of the scheme design. Um, we've got a new bridge alignment to the north of the existing bridge. The existing bridge that you see there, that's going to be removed. Um, so is the existing five leg roundabout. That uh, existing roundabout, uh, we're going to retain that palm that's in the middle of the roundabout and build a nice park, a pocket park, so we're calling it. A nice park area around that and using the palm as a bit of a, a focal point. The new signalized T intersection, uh, that's been selected based on a variety of reasons from road safety, but also creating a solution that, that provides the most efficient evacuation uh, uh, times from the New Brighton area. Um, as Nathan said, so the, the bridge is ultimately, that's a, that's a pinch point um, on a key evacuation route. So very conscious of that. Um, so to obtain that uh, most efficient, efficient evacuation solution, we do need to disconnect Owls Terrace and New Brighton Road uh, from that intersection, and we will reprioritize the traffic from Owls Terrace onto Hardy Street and Seaview into the T intersection. 
the traffic from New Brighton Road that needs to be diverted onto Ralston Street. And what we have here then is uh, free uh, uh, providing a solution that allows traffic to flow a bit more uh, efficiently onto into the intersection, onto the bridge and across to Anzac Drive. So we're providing an extra lane heading west from the new intersection um, that will extend all the way to Anzac Drive. So the changes that are proposed, um, disconnection of these streets, reprioritizing of streets on along Hardy Street, um, they're going to improve evacuation times by about 40 minutes. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this has, uh, these images are some artist impressions of what the area I've just spoken about might look like. Uh, so the new bridge is on the top left there. Um, then you will see the new intersection with the traffic lights on the north side of the new bridge. Uh, the bottom left, you'll see the existing palm tree that's going to be retained with that new pocket park that'll be built around it. And the bottom right image has the new Pages Road and what that could look like approach, approaching the bridge heading for New Brighton. Uh, next slide, please. So this section of the scheme design shows Pages Road itself. Um, so Pages Road has still got quite an undulating carriageway with damage uh, to the carriageway and to the curbs uh, dating back to the 2011 earthquakes. Um, so this section of the, this full section of Pages Road needs to be rebuilt and realigned into the new bridge. Um, if we consider the bridge cross section, um, what it'll look like and what it'll hold, um, we'll have one eastbound lane heading into New Brighton. There'll be two westbound lanes uh, towards the city, and this is going to increase uh, evacuation capacity. Um, we're proposing to have Bhutakawa trees planted down the middle of the road. Um, and there's a number of reasons behind that. Um, it's for road safety. It'll create some side friction, which will help influence traffic speeds. This is quite a straight section of road. Um, it'll also give New Brighton that uplift um, uh, aesthetically as you're heading towards uh, the bridge. And it also, you'll be aware that we've got wetlands being generated on either side of Pages Road in this area uh, from the wet red zone lands. And uh, the vertical trees will help um, uh, get uh, birds flying between the, wet the wetlands uh, up and over vehicles. Um, so each side of the road is going to have on-road uh, on cycle lanes. Um, each side will also have a footpath. The footpath on the north side is going to be a four meter wide uh, shared facility for both walking and cycling. The uh, project also interfaces with uh, red zone developments on either side. Um, down towards the Anzac Drive end, we're going to have a, a there's going to be parking facilities planned as part of that other Waitaki area project. Um, there is the city to sea pathway that is going to connect uh, on the south side of the bridge. And uh, there's going to be three pedestrian crossing points along Pages Road. Um, and that would include the existing uh, Anzac Drive crossing. Uh, this slide shows you an artist impression of what Pages Road might look like. So you see the shared path on the left uh, with those native trees and plants planted on either side with the Bahutikawa trees planted on the, the middle and those two outbound lanes for that increased capacity. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, so this slide shows you what we've proposed along Sevia Road. Um, so as discussed earlier, we proposed that new T intersection of traffic lights to connect Seaview Road into Hawk Street. So the traffic lights, um, the traffic lights is where we can safely get pedestrians and cyclists that are traveling along that new shared path or coming from the pathways along the river, along New Brighton Road to get those people across Hawk Street safely. Um, the proposed design for Seaview Road includes continuing that shared path along uh, from the new intersection with traffic lights along the north side of Seaview Road, past the intersection with Hardy Street. 
So this provides the most direct route for pedestrians and cyclists um, traveling to the center of your Brighton Mall. Um, to achieve this within the space available, we've chosen to retain the existing well-established trees on the north side of the street and place the new shared uh, and place the new shared pathway on the road side of those trees. Um, CV Road will be resurfaced and a section of new no stopping will need to be marked along the north side of the road between the new traffic lights and the intersection with Hardy Street. The existing bus stops on CV Road, they'll be retained and what the one on the north side of the street that will be relocated slightly east of its current position and we'll also include new benches and tactile pavers uh, will be installed. Um, so Mount Street parking will be available on the south side of the street as shown. Uh, the next slide please. Um, so this map of Hardy Street has been uh, rotated ultimately just to fit visibly uh, on the screen so you can view it at a good uh, resolution. Uh, but to get your bearings, uh, this is CV Road along the left hand side of the screen with the Collingwood and uh, Burrsford intersections midway along and then you've got Owls Terrace on the right hand side of the screen. So to get so the most efficient way to get traffic out of New Brighton area, ultimately we need to reroute Owls Terrace traffic onto Hardy Street and give priority to Hardy Street and Seaview traffic into the new intersection with traffic lights. Um, to achieve this, we proposed cul-de-sac Owls Terrace at the Hardy Street intersection and change the priority of the intersections along Hardy Street. For improved safety, each of the intersections along Hardy Street will have raised safety platforms. Um, this is to help slow traffic and make it safer for pedestrians to cross the road. We also propose to build some curb build-outs with new planting and street trees along the street. Um, and this is for road safety and uh, to give the street a lift uh, aesthetically. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, so here's some artist impressions of what CV Road and Hardy Street might look like. Uh, next slide, please. So this image is of um, Rawson Street and Pratt Street uh, with New Brighton Road along the bottom. Um, so as we mentioned, New Brighton Road also needs to be disconnected from the Hawke Street intersection. Um, and this is to obtain that most uh, efficient evacuation solution. Um, New Brighton Road traffic then will be rerouted onto Rawson Street to connect with Keys Road as the connection through to New Brighton. Uh, most of the works on Rawson Street will be safety improvements, um, particularly at the Rawson's Pratt and Keys Road intersection. Uh, we'll also include some race safety platforms at the bends on Rawson Street uh, to slow traffic uh, around those bends. Pratt Street will become a cul-de-sac and this will enable space for resilient flood protection measures along the river, um, as well as some stormwater facilities uh, to prevent flooding in the future. If we go on to the next slide, there's a couple of images of what Rawson Street and Pratt Street will look like. So that's the uh, overall scheme design. I'll pass you over to Emma now, who will uh, talk you through the landscape design. Hello, I'm Emma. I am the project landscape architect. And I'll be talking through a few of the key drivers and objectives for the landscape design. So firstly, uh, one was to enhance the sense of arrival into New Brighton. We've done this in two ways. Firstly, through planting. So Peters Road will be lined with the native coastal forest that Peter's just spoken about. Um, this will be made up of plants that will tie into the plant pellets of the future adjacent wetlands and encourage bird flyover instead of birds traveling 
a road level. Um, the mixed planting will allow views through to the wetland and connect the users through to the surrounding landscape. Down the central median, we've proposed Pahutukawa trees. So they're an iconic, recognisable coastal tree that will really help contribute to the residents' and visitors' sense of arrival into the coastal environment of New Brighton. And although they're not uh, native to the South Island, they are really suitable for the coastal conditions and saline soils of this area. Secondly, to enhance the sense of arrival, we have reserved space on either side of Pages Road on the east side of the bridge for artwork. Um, we'd love to see gateway artwork as a sense of arrival into New Brighton, and this artwork will be developed in collaboration with Mana Whenua at a later stage in the project towards detailed design and construction. There are other opportunities for artwork throughout the project. So this could be through built um, landscape elements such as the bridge handrails and paving patterns. Secondly, we uh, one of our next key drivers was to provide opportunities for observation and connection to the natural environment. So the Pocket Park will have a lookout in the exact location of the old existing bridge as a nod to recent history in the area. So users can stand at this lookout and look out over towards the river and the future wetlands, giving people an opportunity to connect to the natural environment. The iconic palm in the roundabout will remain in place and be landscaped around to create a comfortable and attractive green space for people to enjoy and spend time in this area. Thirdly, our next key driver was to improve pedestrian and cyclist safety and connectivity and access to New Brighton. So walking and cycling facilities will be improved with a shared path that comes down Pages Road and continues down Seaview Road towards Brighton Mall. And these Clean, strong lines um, of the paths and built features, strengthened by the avenues of trees, will form a visual connection from the pier to the river. And we anticipate that future adjacent projects will contribute to an increase in pedestrians and cyclists in the area. So we'll be working closely with these project teams as well to provide a cohesive connection along the Otakaro Avon River corridor. Our next key driver is the regeneration of native ecosystems, biodiversity and habitat of native wildlife. So our plant strategy will be to support local biodiversity and to add vibrance to New Brighton. We will be working with our nursery and operations teams to create a plant palette that is suitable for exposed coastal conditions and sandy soils of New Brighton. Planting and creating shade along the river will be really key in creating habitat and the regeneration of native ecosystems and biodiversity. And lastly, health and wellbeing benefits from creating a greener environment. So with over 100 proposed new street trees, there'll be a significant increase in canopy cover, which will not only benefit the environment by cooling the streets, but also help with health and well-being of residents by creating a more pleasant and desirable place, public space to spend time in and have that connection to nature throughout their streets. So now I'll pass you back to Nathan who will discuss the next steps. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. So the next steps, essentially this is the program at a high level that's shown on the screen now. So we undertook early engagement in June and July and me and Crystal and a few others from the team were out there speaking with directly affected residents and businesses. We're talking to the key stakeholders um, in the transport industry and also key community um, stakeholders as well to discuss the design with those various parties. Currently we're in the 
formal public consultation um, stage, which is for the month of August, and this webinar is part of that. More details on public consultation is on the website where you signed up to the webinar if you if you want to know more details. We from the public consultation, we will then um, collate the feedback from the public and that will be prepared for the hearings. But at the same time we're doing that, we need do need to update our scheme design. So we'll take on the road and landscape feedback that you've given. We will now a lot of the design is um, that you see is the road and landscape aspects because that is that is what you see on the surface. So we have advanced that in order to get out to consultation and SAP. There are other disciplines that we also need to progress. So the utilities they include stormwater, wastewater, water supply, bridge, geotech, cost estimate consents, you know, these all need to be progress and these are very important because these are the blow, the groundworks. If there is enough public submissions, we will then move into the hearings that will be held later this year. Followed by that, the councillors will then make a decision on the project, whether it's able to progress to the next steps. So the next steps, detailed design phase, that will be over the years 24, 25. This will include a number of things. This will include the detailed design of all aspects of the project. It will also include consents. And when, largely speaking, when I mean by consents, this will include resource consents, contaminated land, work in the river, ecology, stormwater, manawa whenua discussions, archaeology. We've also got um, a small piece of parcel of unused land um, that will need to be purchased as well. There's also the procurement of the contractor to construct the works that we need to do. We also need to seek Wakatahi funding and so CCC will be seeking that from Wakatahi who are the central government. And there's also a lot more that happens behind the scenes but that just gives you a flavour of what that phase does look like. And then we move into construction and That'll be starting in 2026 and run, will run for two years. But also, pl please bear in mind, this is all if it all goes well. It's a, I've got to say that it's, it, everything lines up and it goes well. But also, I want to draw your attention to the words down at the bottom of the screen where my mouse is sitting. This is a disclaimer around funding. So to make all the changes that you've seen in this consultation, we do need to get additional funding. The allocation of the additional funding will need to be considered as part of the Crusher City Council's 24 to 34 long term plan. So, for people that don't know what that is, that is a plan of all that we have councils going to spend the money in the next 10 years. And this project needs to be included in that to be able to um, go ahead, or the additional funding needs to be included in that. Sorry. So, to finish this presentation, we're now going to play a fly through for you. So please sit back and enjoy the fly through of the project. The team have worked hard to get this fly through and the design out so you, you can enjoy the fly through. And after the fly through, we'll have some time for some questions. So please feel free to pop them into the chat as Crystal described at the start of the webinar. Now we'll head into the fly through. Check out the proposed changes for the gateway to New Brighton, Pages Road Bridge and surrounding streets. To improve everyday and emergency access, we're building a new bridge slightly north of the existing Pages Road Bridge. We're renewing Pages Road from Anzac Drive to the new bridge to create a gateway that celebrates New Brighton. One lane in and two lanes out of New Brighton will significantly improve the traffic flow after large events or if needed in an emergency evacuation. On-road cycle lanes are added to each side of the road with a new footpath on the south and a four metre wide path for walking and cycling on the north side of the road. Native trees and plants will be planted on both sides, as well as Pahutakawa trees down the newly created median to create a gateway to New Brighton. The new bridge over the Otakaro Avon River will be more resilient to future earthquakes and climate change. The roundabout on the New Brighton end of the bridge is no longer efficient or safe for all road users. 
an intersection with traffic lights and a raised safety platform will make it much safer for everyone. To create this, New Brighton Road and Owls Terrace will no longer be connected to the intersection. Traffic modelling shows that closing these roads along with the other changes will make the area's emergency evacuation time about 40 minutes faster. We're aware that many people love the palm tree in the middle of the roundabout, and we plan to keep it as a feature in a new pocket park, which will also have landscaping and paths for walking and cycling. With Owls Terrace closed north of Beresford Street, residents will have access via Beresford and Collingwood Streets. A new shared access way from the Owls Beresford corner will provide walking and cycling access from the new pocket park and bridge to the paths along the river. Seaview Road will be resurfaced and the four metre wide path along Pages Road will continue as a three metre wide path for walking and cycling towards the Brighton Mall. To allow for this walking and cycling path and to keep the well-established trees, we'll put in a no stopping area on the north side of Seaview Road from Hawk to Hardy Streets. Hardy Street will need to be upgraded as the main connection for traffic coming from Owls Terrace to Seaview Road. This will include a new road surface and street trees. We're upgrading Hardy Street as we'll be closing a small section of Owls Terrace to improve the emergency evacuation of the area. All intersections along Hardy Street will have raised safety platforms to slow traffic to a 30 km per hour speed limit, making it much safer for people using the pedestrian crossings. To improve safety, Owls Terrace will become a cul-de-sac at Hardy Street. Owls Terrace will be accessed via Beresford and Collingwood Streets. A small section of New Brighton Road will be closed to vehicles between Rawson Street and Pages Road, with access remaining for pedestrians and cyclists. This will improve evacuation times. Rawson Street will be upgraded with intersection improvements and raised safety platforms to slow traffic around the tight corners. The road will be resurfaced, trees added, and 10 minute parking provided outside Beachcomba Dairy. The intersection of Keys Road, Rawson Street and Pratt Street will be made safer. Pratt Street will become a cul-de-sac and will be upgraded, including a new road surface and street trees. Let's call it all about the gateway to New Brighton. Head online to letstalk.ccc.govt.nz forward slash pages road bridge. again. Um, thank you, Nathan, Pete and Emma for your presentations. Um, we've now got some time for questions. Um, if you would like to ask a question, please pop it into the chat now. Um, and like I said previously, if you are unable to access the chat function, you can email these through to let's talk at ccc.govt.nz. We may not get through all questions today, um, but we will make sure that we answer these in writing and, and get them emailed out to you. Um, we do have a question that was emailed in earlier. Um, can I get the project team to answer this, please? Why is New Brighton Road closing? Um, that is a very good question. Um, so we have done some traffic modelling around connecting New Brighton Road. And if we added New Brighton Road, we would add 25 minutes to the to the emergency evacuation um, of the area and also disconnecting New Bryan Road allows room for river flood protection and also the stormwater there's going to be some stormwater management facilities in in that area as well I think that's covered all Pete yeah cool great thanks for that Nathan um, we've got another question in about um, whether we've spoken to the New Brighton Community Gardens um, and we have sent the information through to them, but I do think there's a question in here about fruit trees. Um, yeah, is there an opportunity to provide uh, fruit trees within the design um, to provide kai to the, um, the locals? Emma, would you mind answering that one? Sure. Um, Typically, we don't like to put fruit trees as street trees. They can create quite a mess on the pavement um, and slipping hazards and things. But in parks, certainly, that could be something to consider. And um, we really like to um, encourage mahinga kai and improve ecosystems and diversity and opportunities to um, 
be sustained by our natural environment. So it could be something that we look at in the pocket park um, as long as we're not introducing species that are going to um, conflict with any of the native species. But yeah, it's a good suggestion. Cool. Thanks, Emma. Um, I'll. Oh, we have got another question through. Um, will there be any changes to the number five bus route that runs along Bereford Street? Pete, are you able to answer that one? Hi, Crystal. Um, so there's no changes proposed to the bus routes themselves. Um, there are changes proposed to a number of bus stops. Um, so there are currently bus stops at the Anzac Drive intersection on Pages Road. They are proposed to be retained in their existing location. There are two bus stops midway between Anzac Drive and the bridge. Um, because of the, the red zone has removed all housing from that area, those two bus stops are proposed to be removed. Um, there's bus stops on uh, Seaview Road that will be retained. However, one bus stop needs to be just locally relocated and uh, we'll also will upgrade the bus stops on Hardy Street. Um, but uh, no changes to the route of any of those existing uh, buses. So I just want to jump in there as well. Thanks, Pete. They're, they're well answered. Um, this project is not changing any bus routes. However, we cannot speak for other projects that are on within Council and Ikan and Wakatahi that are looking at the future of public transport in Christchurch. Good. Thanks, Nathan. Great. Thanks, team. Um, another question and what services should be carried by the new bridge and with what requirements? Yeah, so yep. the new bridge. I, oh. Yeah, I can speak to that. Um, so the, the new bridge, uh, that's part of what we're developing right now. So I think uh, Nathan mentioned um, we focused our efforts on producing the road design and landscaping design so we could get a get a skeleton design out to the public, out to consultation, um, so they could see what is proposed. Um, we know there's a lot of um, interest and concern um, around what will be done. So we wanted to get that out in the open so people could see um, with regard to the utilities design and uh, uh, designs across the bridge, they have yet to be uh, uh, developed and confirmed, so we'll we're not in a position to confirm that right now. Um, I could probably just jump in there and just give a bit of an overview of the types of services that you can speak to across there. So you have the water, wastewater, powers, and comms should be across that bridge as well. Um, but we don't have specifics around it, like Pete said. Cool. Thanks, Tim. Um, we've got another question, uh, and it's around um, young people cycling from South Brighton, South Shore to um, Avonside High School and Shirley Boys High School. Um, could you consider cycle safety at the Owls Terrace Hardy Street intersection for cyclists um, and cyclists needing to negotiate crossing Hawke Street when travelling towards New Brighton, North New Brighton? Yeah, I think um, me and Pete will probably both answer this, but we need some slides to help. Um, so can we flick slides, please? So could we flick to the Hardy Street slide? Is that possible, Ken? Yeah, that one. I think this is kind um, of... Yeah, so ultimately, um, if you're travelling along, along Isles Terrace, um, there will be... Uh, pedestrian crossing and cycle access through the cul-de-sac. The new cul-de-sac has been created. Um, if you can point to that. Yeah, one no. um, So we'll cul-de-sac Al's Terrace, but we will provide uh, walking and cycling connections across that uh, intersection. Um, there is uh, 
and that will take you through to, on a much quieter street through to the pocket park and access to the new intersection, which will have um, traffic light crossing facilities for both uh, pedestrian and cyclists. Could we flip to the intersection, please? So then you come up Ells Terrace up here, and you'll be able to safely get across the signalised intersection and then safely across Hawke Street, then down onto New Bryan Road, or you can go across the river and then connect to the coastal, um, sorry, the city sea pathway there. Yeah, I think that's that's it. Pete, answered that. Great. Um, moving on. Um, this is a question for Emma. Um, will the plantings along the footpaths be set back for future growth and weather conditions? Um, this person has said that the plantings at Tapunawai um, have overgrown the pathway and have created some trip hazards. Yeah, I am aware that there are areas of planting around the city that haven't really been done to standard, but um, we will definitely be in our planting plan specifying that plants are set back from footpaths and lawns as well, um, and that we'll try not to use any plants that are long and strappy grasses that could be trip hazards and things. So we will be designing all our uh, plans to the infrastructure design standards. Um, and um, when it comes to the point of construction, it's very important that we're on site there to make sure that um, contractors are following those plans and setting plants with back as they should be. Um, we've got a question, and I'm not sure if we're able to answer this now. Our um, lead engineer for the project, unfortunately, has COVID, um, so we may have to answer this one in writing afterwards, but I will ask anyway. Um, the raised uh, safety platforms appear not to have a detectable curb. Um, pedestrians who are blind, um, deaf, blind or have low vision um, may inadvertently walk out onto the roadway with no warning. Has anyone got any um, information about the race safety platforms or we have to come back to that one? Hi, Crystal. Um, we'll come back to that one with a written response. Great. Yeah, that's appropriate. Um, and I think the last question that we've got in the chat um, is how much more busy do you envision Hawke Street becoming? Um, could you consider the safety of school children and high school children um, doing the school run with the Keys and Hawke Street intersection? Uh, can you repeat that again, Crystal? Were there kind of two questions yeah. in there? Yeah, so um, I think it's in reference to the uh, the Keys and Hawke Street intersection, uh, which uh, is not one of the intersections yep. being upgraded as part of this project. Um, but is there scope to uh, do some work around there to consider the safety, particularly around um, school children um, using that intersection? Yeah, I could. I'll start off. I think with that. Um, so that intersection is actually is. <laughs> The scope has grown on the project and we've um we've considered that intersection but we can't really at the scope of the project we're trying to pull it back to the bridge as you see it's growing arms and legs however during our consultation period we have actually heard about this intersection um i would suggest that you do us i'd suggest you submit um, your feedback on that one and then that will help us is that right, Crystal, for in terms of submitting feedback? To submit yeah, feedback. absolutely. Yeah. And um, um, go on, sorry. Um, yeah, so I was just going to reiterate that point. Um, obviously, there's been a number of good good points raised in the chat um, and some questions, and um, I do encourage you to, to make a submission um, and, and include those points in it. Um, it's all very helpful information for the project team to make adjustments to the plan where they can. Um, just to add to that, uh, um, so the Keys and Hawk intersection, because of the changes we're making at putting New Brighton traffic onto Rosen Street, that will likely increase 
the traffic coming out of Keys Road onto Hawk Street. Um, and uh, so it'll be good to understand how that will affect that intersection and who uses it. Essentially, after this consultation, the project team will investigate that intersection. Um, and just to note, um, as in the presentation, there is a signalised intersection at Hawke Seaview where people can safely cross. I know it's not the location you're, you're seeking, but there is a um, crossing point there. It's not quite the ideal solution for that intersection. And the, essentially, the design team is going to go take a look at the keys and Hawke's intersection. Awesome. Um, thank you, uh, everyone, for your questions. Um, if you do think of anything else once we're um, through with the webinar, please just email them through to us um, at let's talk uh, at ccc.govt.nz. There'll be um, that'll come up on the screen shortly. Kieran, can you jump to the next slide? Oh, before you do that, Crystal, um, just sure. There's one right at the top. Um, that I've just seen so from Stephanie. Very informative, well presented webinar. Kudos to the project team for the hard work to get this project out of the consultation. Looking forward to future progress. So yeah, thank you very much, Stephanie, for that positive feedback. Appreciate that. And before we maybe close, just 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 looked out the window and it's snow on top of the Port Hills. So enjoy that view later. Cool. Um, well, we've just had one, uh, sorry, one question just slipped through. Seeing as we still have a little bit more time, we will answer this one. Um, exactly. It's from Anne at Spokes. I'm still not clear on the size of the shared paths to Anzac Drive, so I assume that's the uh, the size of the Pages Road. Okay. Good. So I assume that's the width of the Pages Road pathway on the north side of Pages Road. So that is proposed to be a four meter wide shared path. Um, and that continues up to the uh, signalised intersection, and uh, it will be four metres over the bridge as well. So that would be four metres all the way to the bridge, um, and it does reduce to a three metre path between the intersection along Seaview Road uh, to Hawke Street intersection. So between, oh. um, to reiterate, between Hawke's and Hardy Street along CV Road. Um, we do have space constraints because there's this existing trees there, so we've um, we can allocate three metres there. Great. Um, that brings us to the end of our presentation. So thank you everyone for taking time out of your busy days to join us. Um, it is really important. Um, that we hear your feedback. So please do jump online um, and provide a submission on this project, particularly um, with some of the information that you've put in the chat. Um, so you can go along to letstalk.ccc.govt.nz forward slash pages road bridge. Um, and if you jump to the next slide, please, Kieran. Um, if you've got any feedback for this uh, webinar or if you've got any further questions or feedback for the project team, please do get in touch with us. Uh, you can do that by emailing letstalk at ccc.govt.nz. Um, from the team and myself, enjoy the rest of your day. Um, and yeah, hopefully we get some uh, some nice snow to look at for the rest of the day. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>